Hey everyone, welcome into our YouTube channel at Flippin' Hippos. Thank you for joining us this evening. This is Star the Flipping Hippo, and it is Monday, March 18th. It's Monday, meaning you guys probably already know what time it is. It's time for what sold on eBay. <laughs> I haven't done an exciting intro like that in a long time. Welcome in, guys. You're looking at our shipment pile from last Monday. Um, so we're just going to do what I always do. I'm going to show you the photos and our Instagram posts from each day last week, showing you how many packages we sent out each day to give you an idea of the volume, because we are a volume-based business. And then I will show you um, some of the highlights of the week, some of the exciting things that sold, some of the bread and butter, some bolos for you guys, and just some meh stuff because not everything is exciting the reality of reselling is that sometimes you find amazing things and sometimes you deal in a lot of the filler and bread and butter um but that's the reality so last week on monday we had 27 items that sold and that was a really good weekend we were really excited um as far as the week following it was kind of, it was okay. It wasn't bad by any means, but it wasn't stellar. It wasn't exciting. It wasn't record breaking, but it was steady and the volume was good. So let's take a look at it. Um, I have them all in one post last week. Last week was a weird week. I was sick and um, it was a Wednesday that Instagram and Facebook were down. So I just saved all of my photos and put them up on Friday for a week in review. So we'll go through them real quick here. Um, after that amazing weekend, we had six sales on Tuesday, which is good for us. Tuesday's typically slow. Uh, Wednesday, we had nine eBay sales, but only seven packages. I love people who buy more than one item, don't you? And on Thursday, we had six eBay and one Posh. And then, um, Friday, sorry, I'm trying to read my own my own post here. On Friday, we had 10 items that sold and nine packages that went out. Eight of the 10 sales were eBay and two were Posh. So the week overall was, was pretty good. Um, as far as volume, kind of like right where we should be. So not bad, but we're not breaking any records over here. Um, of course, we didn't list as much as we normally do last week with me being sick. And Keith had some other stuff going on. Um, as far as other back-end stuff on the business. So we weren't listing as much as we normally do. And obviously, the more you list, the more you sell. Everyone says that all the time, and everyone can attest. When you buckle down and you list a lot, you will sell more. And on weeks where you're kind of lax, you're going to sell less. But we were okay with the week. It was good. And this uh, weekend was the same. Um, it's actually... As far as volume goes, the weekend was below average. We should have at minimum like 27 to 30 go out after three days of not shipping because um, this entails from Friday at 2 p.m. until Monday at 2 p.m. And we had 21 packages, 18 eBay sales and three Poshmark sales. But the overall average sale price for all of these items was higher than average for us. And our profits and our overall, um, what we netted after gross and fees and shipping and all of that and all of this was a little higher than normal. So, you know, you, you gotta kind of weigh it, you know, less volume, which means less work for us, more profit, higher average sale price. Um, so we're pretty happy right now. Things are trudging along as they should be. We're coming right in where we should be. Um, but it's nothing to write home about yet. It's nothing super stellar, super exciting. But as far as the items go, there was some really cool stuff that sold. So let's go take a look over here at those. We will start with the plush like I always do because plush is my favorite. You guys, this little kitty sold for $11.25. She was 50 cents for us. She shipped first class. She weighed like two ounces. So 11.50 was fine. She's only eight inches tall. Um, this, let me show you her tag. 
this Fred Rogers company, this cat, Katarina, kitty cat. I've actually had quite a few of her, different sizes. Um, she usually does really well. She usually flips pretty fast. Um, not a lot of money unless it was one of the bigger ones, but she doesn't stick around for too long. You get your money, you get your investment back on her pretty quick. This is a Gans Webkins cow, and I always tell you guys that these Webkins still have a following. They don't really go for too much money. I got them for 50 cents. Um, when I find them for 50 cents, I pick them up, especially if they still have this sealed code. The sealed code makes them worth more money and they'll, they'll sell faster if they have that code. From what I understand, it is a one-time use code with no expiration date on it. So the folks that do collect these, um, they look for those codes. He sold for $13. Like I said, he was 50 cents. He shipped first class. I believe we put him in one of our wee tiny like four by four by four boxes just because he had his code and collectors like their tags and codes to stay nice looking. You guys will remember Elmo very recently from a haul video. So this guy didn't stick around for too long. He was 50 cents and he sings and he's cute and he moved pretty quickly. Um, I want to say he was in a haul video maybe a month, month and a half ago, but he didn't go in the store right away. It took me a couple weeks to get him in there, but he sold fast. He sold for 15 and he did, did ship in a box as well, but it was first class. He did not weigh over a pound inside of his box. And then this green owl and this pink owl, you guys will remember from a very recent haul video as well. These guys showed up. I bought both of them for 50 cents a piece. So a dollar for both owls. The same buyer bought both owls and put best offers in on them. And it came out to $20.80 total for both owls. And then I put them together inside of a eBay branded tissue paper and they went in a poly bag first class. But these, this is an example of the classic toy company brand that I'm um, always talking about with you guys. They're really cheap carnival toys and I, it blows my mind and I will never understand it, but people collect them. They pay good money for them. Um, especially when you can find the same animal in different colors. They, uh, I get messages all the time when I have a single one up do you have this in blue or purple? So just keep an eye out for those, you guys. That's a bolo for you. And then we have new Nintendo Super Mario Brother and Super Mario and Luigi. <laughs> Super Mario Brother, Super Mario and Luigi. Boy, that's a mouthful. Say that 10 times fast. Um, these guys are wee little small. I paid 50 cents a piece, so a dollar for the pair. They didn't have any hang tags or any tush tags, so they went... Um, I put them up for 25. They would have been a little bit more if they had a tush tag or a hang tag of some sort to show what brand they were, but they are recognizable enough characters that I felt okay listing them at 25 for the pair. I did take a best offer of 19. They shipped together in a poly bag, first class. And now we are looking at my Build-A-Bear Despicable Me Minion, Bob. You guys, remember last week's What Sold video when I said I sold three minions in one week and I've never seen that many minions go in one week and I asked if anybody knew if there was a movie coming out or what's going on, why they're so popular all of a sudden. Um, three of them sold last week and here this one sells this week. So maybe, I don't know, maybe it's just that time of year when people are shopping for minions. I don't know. This one cost me $2. I want to say $1.99 and he sold for $21 and he shipped in a poly bag first class. That's the best kind. So now we're going to take a look at some of the stuff that has been sitting around forever. I picked this up. Oh my gosh. I mean, it's on the white background, so it can't be that old, but Probably it's been in the store for about a year. And what really blows my mind about this is I have had a lot of shirts and hoodies and items, hats and stuff with this Marshall Thundering Herd in the store before. And then it moves pretty quickly. It doesn't sit that long. This one was new with tags. And boy, did it sit and sit and sit. 
So it finally sold for $19.95 over the week, and it went first class. I was just still checking. I felt like it went in a, a padded flat, but it didn't. It did ship first class, and it was $0.99 cents originally our cost. This Talbot two-piece suit, oh my gosh, these pictures, y'all, if I wasn't so interested in being such an honest and transparent person, I would not be showing you this, because look, it's horrible. It's awful. You can't even see the, what am I doing here? This is like the one time I tried to use Lola. It, those of you that, you might remember Lola. She was our full-length mannequin that we recently sold because she killed my back. I tried to use her once and she's just too much for me. Um, this is a wool suit. It was 99 cents for both pieces. This is so old that it came from our local honeypot thrift, which closed last July. So it's been around for a while. I picked it up because it was two piece suit, 99 cents and pure wool. I thought it would be a fast flip. It was back in the beginning when I was learning. Um, I don't know that I would ever source something like this again. Not this brand maybe, but I might because it's wool and wool is one of those fabrics that I'm always telling people. If you find something in wool, get it. It's wool, linen, silk, leather, and suede. Like, I feel like if I find stuff in any of those fabrics for 99 cents, regardless of the brand or what have you, the size, um, I don't know. But it's been around forever in <laughs> the pictures, you guys. Oh my God. Can't even see the whole skirt. Anyway, it finally sold for $23.75. I did manage to get it into a padded flat. I was contemplating putting it in a box, but it weighed like three pounds. Um, it was listed under first class. It shouldn't have been. It, it weighed like three or four pounds. And I contemplated putting it in a box, but I think it went all the way to California. Yes, because I thought it was weird that someone in California wanted a heavy long sleeve wool two-piece whatever because it's warm out there. Anyway, in a box to California, it would have been like 15, 16 bucks to ship. So I got it in a padded flat. That was a fun day. That was fun to watch. All right, guys, moving on. I'm going to go through some of our jeans. A lot of these are the bread and butter brands I pick up just to give you an idea what they sell for. Gloria Vanderbilt is a brand I will pick up if it's plus size or unique. These were unique. They haven't been around that long. Um, I picked them up out of season. So I want to say they've been around like maybe since the fall. Not, not too long for this brand and being shorts you know that i listed in the winter but they're neat they have the belt and they're pink and they were a good larger size and so i accepted a best offer of 17.50 for these and they did ship in a padded flat they were 99 cents these genealogy jeans i actually sourced last june this is all i'm moving around um I got these for 99 cents. I thought they were going to be for me. I thought I was going to wear them to Vegas. I thought they were so cute. And when I got them home after we washed and washed them and got them in and I tried them on, um, they were, oh my gosh, so long because they're definitely not for someone who's short. They're not petite. I didn't like the way they looked on me and they were just too long. So I put them in the store and then they sat forever. So this is probably a brand I will absolutely avoid moving forward. I don't know though. I mean, again, look, they're unique. They had these sequins along the legs. They're good size. So would I avoid it? I don't know. I mean, July, August, September, October, September, January, February, March. That's eight months. Um, slower brands do take like four to nine months to sell so that's like right in that zone um i don't know but like i said i picked them up for me because i really thought that they were going to be for ebay open last year i just didn't like them so we sold them uh we did get the 2376 for them and they went in a pad of flat these aeropostale jeans have been around for a long time this is a brand i don't really pick up anymore either it was something i used to grab if i found it for 99 cents um 
this is a bad size too, but I used to grab everything under the sun when we, when Keith and I were learning, we just, if it was 99 cents, we risked it. Um, the Aeropostale still sells though. It sits for a long time. It's very long tail, but this one sold for 1995. I believe it was first class even. No, it was a padded flat. Okay. So this was a padded flat. They've been around for a long time. Um, they were 99 cents, but again, I, I kind of don't pick this brand up anymore. I do avoid it, but the stuff I have is still moving. So at least you get your cost of goods back at a little bit of profit. You guys, these have not been around for very long. Many of you will remember seeing these very recently in a haul. And I said in the haul video, look at these. these I wish these were my size. I wanted to keep these guys. I wanted to keep these and wear these so bad you have no idea i think they are so cute well, look at them aren't they not so 70s and just adorable these huge bell bottoms um i'm gonna look yeah the leg opening is 23 inches so that's 12 and a half inches just from edge to edge that's a huge bell bottom Anyway, when I showed them in the haul, I told you guys, Dollhouse is not a good brand, and normally I wouldn't touch it, um, but these were just super cute. They have these rawhide strings, this little belt that ties, and they were 99 cents. So I listed them for 31, and I took a best offer of $25, um, and they flipped in under a month. So that was a pretty cool find. And that's just to kind of, you know, re reiterate to you guys that sometimes it is about the looks. If it's got a unique look or it's super cute or has good graphics, sometimes the brand does not matter. This ball and buck shirt, this is the second time it sold. Um, I'm not even sure if I showed this in a haul video, to be honest with you. It is a shooting shirt. And we found it for... 99 cents it sold the first time Keith listed it overnight for 40 and it had free returns on it so it came back and the guy's complaint was that it fit like a medium and he felt like it had trunk and was not an extra large so when it came back um, we refunded him I inspected it we did the measurements on it it does measure in at an extra large size so either he was just trying to make up an excuse to return it or it honestly didn't fit him and he just thinks he's an extra large and he might need a bigger size. I don't know because we measured it and it's an extra large. So I put it back in the store for Keith after we refunded the guy and checked the measurements just to be sure because if it was measuring in at a medium size, we absolutely would have put the measurements in the listing and said this size runs small, but it doesn't. So it went back into the store and the first time it went overnight for 40 this time it sat for two days and then it went on a weekend sale so it went all the way down to 38.44 and uh keith took a best offer of 35 just to get it out the door again um but yeah it would it it's been around for like two weeks like it literally sold overnight came back and sold within two nights these shooting shirts are definite bolos you guys we've had a cabela's one before and it was the same thing it sold overnight these shooting shirts um have the patch here you see that on the shoulder for people who go shooting and if you ever find the left-handed shirts where the patch would be on the left side those are a definite bolo those are huge money because left-handed people and i am one of them we always have such a hard time finding things for us or made for us so yeah if you guys ever find a left-handed one with the patch over there definitely pick it up but I would pick up any shooting shirt. And like I said, we got this for 99 cents, but we would have paid full price for this. Just a couple more things, you guys. Um, I did tell you that as we were cleaning out our storage room upstairs that we so lovingly call the serial killer room, um, I told you about the little brown bag of items that I found that we had found at a yard sale. And it was full of stuff that was just worth so much money. It had, um, if you if you regularly watch our what sold videos every Monday, it had the little poo figures in there, the each character for a month 
that matched like the theme of the month if you guys remember those poo characters we had one buyer buy them all for eighty dollars there was a mickey mouse with a heart balloon and he sold for like 50 i want to say yeah all this stuff was in this brown bag of these really nice items that were worth money and i don't know if i told you guys yet or not and if i did i'm sorry i'm repeating myself but we did figure out how that happened so the day before we left for ebay open last year the saturday before we left because we flew in on a sunday we went to a community yard sale it was the very last yard sale we went to before we flew out to vegas and we brought everything home in this brown bag and then when we got back for whatever reason somebody moved the bag and then it got moved again and so it just kind of guess i guess we forgot about it and and then it got buried but i believe this is like the last super duper expensive thing out of that bag um we did sell the mickey with the heart balloon and all the poo figures um there were some hats in there that might still be around but yeah this sold for 51 dollars it shipped first class it was just a tiny little thing you can see here um but yeah so i guess our our lesson that we learned that we would like to pass on to everyone else if you're going to go out of town for any reason and you go sourcing right before you leave um put the bag of stuff somewhere so when you get back put it on your photo stand by your lights or something so when you get back you'll be like oh hey yeah i bought all this stuff before we left and now it's time to photograph it and list it because we legitimately just the two um the mickey mouse and the Minnie mouse here we had over a hundred dollars gross not profit gross sitting in that bag plus the poos that's like two hundred dollars gross and there was some other stuff in there and that's give or take you know right around a hundred dollar profit um so yeah, just, I guess that's my cautionary tale of the week. Be careful where you put your stuff. Don't go away for a week and come back and move it and forget about it. But, you know, it did sell, so it's not like it got lost forever. We eventually found it. And we're still finding stuff up there. I cannot wait to show you guys some of the stuff we are finding. We are, like, the most irresponsible sorcerers. Sorcerers? Like we're, mag like we're magicians. We're sorcerers! No, I didn't mean that. We are irresponsible thrifters. We like have all this stuff just laying around. And if you watched my live show last night, I, I talked a lot about the death piles and the I don't want to piles just being money that you're throwing on the floor and ignoring because that's really what it is. That brown bag that had all that stuff in it, it's like we took money and put it in the bag and moved the bag and hid the bag and went to Vegas and just forgot about it. It is so, so, so important that all of us really especially now that spring is coming, that we start thinking about spring cleaning, decluttering, getting through those death piles, getting through those I don't want us, because it's, you're literally throwing money away. If you took capital away from your business and you invested it into something that is not selling, not, not selling because it's not listed, you're throwing money away. The whole point of taking capital from the business and spending it on goods is to flip those goods so that you have more profit to put back into the business or give yourself a paycheck, whatever you do. Um, I'm lecturing, I'm so sorry guys, but it's like, I'm so frustrated even with myself. Like I know a lot of people have this problem with all these death piles and things that get misplaced and I'm not innocent, Keith isn't innocent. It's, it's kind of exciting sometimes when you find this stuff but sometimes it's so frustrating like you just get so angry at yourself you're like why am i not a better person <laughs> why don't i bring things home and list them why do i put them in this room where they get lost oh all right what you're looking at right now is um extras from one of my subscription boxes i think i showed you guys a couple of these before that i'll put in the store um, I do Ipsy and Birchbox and each one sends you five samples or makeup items every month. The Birchbox comes in a box, Ipsy comes in these little bags, and normally I keep most of what I get and I really like the subscriptions because I really haven't had to go to the drugstore or to Walmart to buy makeup since I started them. But sometimes I get stuff I don't want and so I just list it. I mean, why not? If you have a posh closet and you have an eBay store, 
and you get stuff you don't like, you might as well stick it in there. It's part of our reseller life, right? Um, so yeah, that sold for $13. Just two makeup samples, two uh, perfume, not even makeup. Two perfume samples in one of the bags sold for $13. So, you know, if you if you do these subscriptions and you sell a couple of things, you know, every month that you don't keep, it kind of pays for the script subscription. And then you got, you know, whatever you kept that you can use. It's my, uh, it's how I justify the subscriptions, having two. Plus, I do YouTube, and I have to have makeup on for that, right? Um, he, these, oh my gosh, these are old. These are old. These are like, I think Keith got them in 2017. That is what I want to tell you. I want to say that almost two summers ago now, he uh, picked these up. I even think I, I remember where. There was a little thrift store we saw on the way to take my son out for pizza. And we stopped in one day and their prices were woof out the roof. Their clothing was so expensive, so we just kind of took a walk through their glassware. And Keith found these, and I remember even thinking, oh, those are going to be worth money. Look at those. They're vintage Sears catalog glasses. Like, this one says circa 1905. I just thought they were super cool, and I thought because of the way they looked and what they were, they would be worth a lot of money and um, sell pretty fast. And so I was, like, on board. I'm like, oh, look at what you found. These are great now. Here we are almost two years later and they finally sold for $13 for the, the set. Um, they paid shipping though. So the $13 was uh, without the shipping. The buyer paid the shipping on them. And if I remember correctly, I want to say he paid $2 for, it was 50 cents a glass. So it was $2 for the whole set. But it took a while. It took a long time. But that might have been normal. I mean, these might be as super duper cool as I think they are. And they're just really long tail. Because you're waiting for that right person to come along. Oh, I did want to go back here and make sure I told you that we paid a dollar for many. I like to tell you guys how much our work cost of goods is. Um, and I think I forgot to tell you. She was a dollar. This came out of my subscription boxes. And these were two. And then... Um, one more thing I sold this week. Everybody give me some applause. La 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 la. I sold shoes. Um, still not my favorite thing to do. I still get GV. They still creep me out, guys. They're still gross. <laughs> but I do um, intentionally and on purpose look through them every week at the Goodwill and source them and photograph them and list them on occasion. I usually save them up till I have a whole bunch and then I'll do a photo day with them. These were the first pair of shoes I ever really so used that I sourced. I mean, over time, I have put shoes in the store before. I would, if they looked new or they had tags or were in the box and we were out and about, I would get them, but this was the first intentional used pair I sourced while Keith and I were out. Um, was it November? Remember when I did the video about getting out of your comfort zone and I challenged everyone to try something new and get out of their comfort zone and I said mine was going to be shoes. I, there's a vi uh, there is a video with a thumbnail floating around somewhere with me holding these up like, ah, I got shoes, but these were them and they were 99 cents. And they sold for $21, and they pay, also paid shipping in addition to that. So, that was our week in review. A couple of bolos for you guys. A couple of examples of our bread and butter and our filler items. A couple examples of our mistakes, brands that I won't get anymore. A couple examples of the absolute treasures we're pulling out of our buried death piles. Um... Hopefully you guys are having a good week and your sales are good. Let me know in the comments how things are going for you. 
Uh, did you find anything cool this week? Did you sell anything awesome? Are you going through your death piles and finding these lost treasures like we are? Do me a favor before you leave and smash that like button. It always helps the channel. And if you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to our channel and help us feed a hungry hippo. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We're at Flippin' Hippos across all social media. You guys have a wonderful evening. May the cha-chings be ever in your favor.